Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Freita. Controversy has been an integral part of policing in St. James over many years. There have been many cases of police officers actively involved in criminal activities to include drug smuggling, the illicit lottery scam, and in a few cases, contract killings. However, of all the incidents the police have been criminally implicated in, none comes close to the 2005 incident in which senior citizens, 63-year-old David Bacchus and 65-year-old Cecil Brown were murdered in a botched early morning police operation in Flanka. In to make matters worse, instead of owning up to their mistakes, the police tried after a major cover-up which backfired big time. Superintendent Derek Cowboy Knight, who was then the police commander for St. James, claimed that the men were killed in a shootout and then displayed a police vehicle with numerous bullet holes to justify his claim. However, a subsequent independent investigation revealed that there were no shootout, but that Bacchus and Brown who were traveling to the market in the company of 65-year-old Audrey Stevens were in fact murdered in cold blood in a case of mistaken identity. Following the independent investigations, four police officers, including the infamous Mitchell McFarlane, were arrested and charged. The government apologized for the incident and promised the family to compensate them. In this edition of Lest You Forget, I will be revisiting that flanker incident from a story I wrote for the Gleaner three years later after the government took responsibility and agreed to compensate the families for their loss. The story, which was published on January 8, 2006, under the headline The Controversial Flanker Shooting, read as follows. News that government has agreed on a compensation package for the family of 66-year-old David Bacchus, who was killed in a controversial police shooting in Flanker, St. James, two years ago, is unlikely to bring closure to the destroyed family. No amount of money can bring closure to my family, because we are still grieving, said Mr. Bacchus' widow, Geneva. We can't stop missing him. The grandchildren speak about him every day. It's like they are waiting for him to come home. Mr. Bacchus and fellow senior citizen Cecil Brown, a newspaper vendor, were killed on the morning of October 25, 2003, when the car in which they were traveling was fired on in what the police claimed was a confrontation between themselves and gunmen. 65-year-old Audrey Stevens, who was also a passenger in the car, suffered gunshot wounds but survived her injuries. Following the shooting, residents of Flanker who dispute the police's version of the incident claim that the men were killed in cold blood by trigger-happy policemen staged two days of fiery protests to vent their hunger. National Security Minister Peter Phillips and the then Police Commissioner Francis Forbes subsequently visit the families and apologize for the incident and promise the families that they would be provided with counseling and assistance with funeral expenses. However, while the promise to assist with funeral expenses was kept, Mrs. Bacchus said the counseling component fell through as the authorities failed to live up to that side of the promise. We had people coming around and speaking to us immediately after the killing, and we were quite grateful for that, said Mrs. Bacchus, the mother and grandmother of Mr. Bacchus's three children and 11 grandchildren. However, nobody has come back to see us since the funeral, and the promised counseling has not taken place. Mrs. Bacchus refused to comment on the adequacy or inadequacy of the reported $7 million settlement. She insisted that her primary interest is to get her children and grandchildren to come to the realization that fate had robbed them of someone they loved and cherished. All I know about the so-called settlement is what I have heard on the radio, said Mrs. Bacchus, in a reserved tone. The lawyer would have that information, but I have not spoken to him in quite a while. The Sunday Gleaner attempted to contact members of Mr. Brown's family, but were unsuccessful. 
Residents of Flanker, who have been quite vigilant in their demand for justice, had become less vocal since six policemen involved in the incident were arrested and charged in August of last year. They await trial, which is slated for later this year. While a monetary settlement will ease the financial burden on the two families that have lost their main breadwinners, as a community, we will not be satisfied until those responsible for the killings pay for their actions, said a resident of the Flanka community. We know that these were two decent men with no connection to criminality, and we want justice for them. While it is unclear as to what was the final outcome of the case, what is certain is that Metro McFarlane, one of the policemen who was involved in the shooting, was killed in 2010 by a colleague in a bizarre shooting incident in Montego Bay. McFarlane, who was on suspension at the time, was reportedly clutching his licensed firearm and chasing a pickpocket who had robbed a woman at the nearby Arbor Street when he was accosted by a policeman. In the end, several shots were fired and McFarlane was killed. Interestingly, Mrs. Bacchus took no comfort in McFarlane's demise. In fact, she seemed somewhat sympathetic. I am not happy at how he died. He too has a family, and they must be feeling like how I am feeling, said Mrs. Bacchus. While more than 20 years have elapsed since that incident, the Bacchus family has still not let go of the pain that they felt that morning. It is most definitely one of those unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica. Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Freita. Like and subscribe for more unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica.